I just kind of wanted to give you guys a heads up of what you're getting yourselves into tonight. Uh, of course, our theme is folk tales, and uh, on the title there is just some uh, folk tale art you can find in children's books and whatnot. And of course, you see on the bottom uh, sort of two frogs uh, is a repetition of Mount Fuji, and that's in a lot of different art. Uh, I wanted to talk about um, many things that are uh, most important about folk kills is how folk kills are passed on throughout generations. Um, you can see them being passed on through campfires, uh, you know, cave drawings, if you want to go that far back. And a popular one, I just wanted to show a quick picture of a Kamishi Bai, and that is where uh, travelers would go town to towns with these boxes of uh, folk kill art. And they would uh, show people, and they go by as they're going through the town and stuff like that. Um, can everyone say Kamishi Bai with me? Kamishi Bai. <laughs> I just want to have you guys go away with a more Japanese, you know, point you need to make. <laughs> Alright, um, uh, Japanese folk hills are heavily influenced on two of their most popular religions, uh, Shintoism and Buddhism. Um, one of the stories we have tonight is uh, directly based on uh, the Jizo, Jizo statues, which are, you know, they, they're kind of like our representation. We'll have uh, statues of Jesus Christ or Mary of Blair, and it's, you know, that's some uh, uh, sort of similar representation of what they have in Japan for their religion. And then uh, in the corner there, there's uh, uh, Amaterasu, the uh, sun goddess. And uh, these, there's no exact proof of this, but Emperor Jiu, um, what helped him guide him through the new lands, new parts of Japan, was through the help of the sun gods. So, part of folk kill maybe that. Um, a lot of different kinds of characters in folk kills you might see. In, uh, in our folk kills, we have uh, just characters as strong, heroic traits, and then we do have our talking animals. In Japan, uh, uh, most of our strong characters are either demon, ogre, mostly uh, called as Oni, and then they have supernatural beings, you know, haunting figures that you can never find, and then there's uh, dragons, of course, in the picture of that. And then just uh, some of the talking animals you might find there uh, would be fox, transforming cat, raccoon dog, badger, and cat uh, uh Yeah, most of these animals just the mystical, mystical animals that would talk to the characters back and forth, just like in our book. All right, uh, there are many different types of stories, and I just thought I'd go through a few different examples. Oh, and the word for story in Japan is, uh, in Japanese, is banashi. Can everyone say banashi with me? Banashi. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, a ghost story is an oka banashi, uh, basically just a haunting figure. Uh, a story of kindness, just, uh, just going on our way, just to, more on a trait than about the supernatural thing is a ongeshi banashi. And then humor stories, just a lot of, lot of uh, epic stories, but most of the time in Japanese stories, are, the stories are kind of a little bit over the top, so there's a lot of humor there. And that is a warai banashi. And a mukashi banashi is just a basic story long, long ago, you know, maybe you think of this. Star Wars and the Galaxy Far Boy. It's just something that we can't grasp, but it's it happens sometime, you know. So. And the next thing is uh, influences on current culture that Japanese uh, folk tales have talked on. Tonight we're having a story called Momotaro Peach Boy, and, and there is a giant peach that comes out of boy. Uh, I think everyone knows James and the giant peach, and there are talking bugs, and uh, it's a, just a giant peach that they sail across the water. And that has uh, some connections, a little bit, little bit uh, from the Momotaro story. And then, of course, everyone knows the, uh, the scary figures that are in either the grudge or the ring, the, the twisted lady who has the hair all over her face. Um, uh, Yuki Ona is what all these characters are based on, and Yuki Ona has been around far longer than uh, Grudge Lady. <laughs> and then there's a uh, frosted snowman. Uh, I know that might be a kind of far grasp, but uh, in the six statue story, uh, well, I think you'll you'll see what happens with the hats and stuff. So yeah, except uh, our our when our inanimate objects come to life, they don't say happy birthday or something else. So. <laughs> 
And then uh, tonight, I just want to give you just a brief overview. We broke the night up into four different bowl kills where we present to everyone. Uh, six little statues is a uh, you know, home Oni, home Genshi, Banashi story, uh, just a New Year's good luck uh, story. And then Bamboo, Princess, oh, I think so. And then uh, basically that's just uh, someone who's a uh, little girl, who's just a uh, little princess who's finding a place to belong. And then we have Intermission. And then the second half is the Snow Lady. That is a, a scary story, and there's four things that happen to it, so you might want to cover your children's eyes during that story. Nothing too graphic, but, you know, still, you <laughs> know. And then we have Peach Boy, your epic, basic adventure story where he destroys the evil demons. Uh, and then there's also talking animals. So, uh, I hope you guys are ready for our folk tale set, alright? <laughs>